but this is something that um, is a call um, to our spiritual lives and disciplines that is rooted throughout the journey of scripture and through ours as well. How many of us actually remember that the Sabbath is a Ten Commandment? Um, I mean, I'll speak for myself. I go to the, you know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not commit adultery. The, the, and, and of course, I remember the honor thy father and mother because I can hear my mom's voice so that your days may be long. In the, I mean, I got those. Um, but Sabbath is a commandment as well because we can't do any of the others if we don't have the margin that Sabbath gives us and breathes into our life. We're here on Labor Day weekend where we remember um, the Industrial Revolution and what happened in our country when Sabbath was taken away in the name of progress and what happened in our communities when we were tried, um, to, when humanity was used as a machine, when we worked 12 hour days, seven days a week, kids included of the deaths that happen, literally and figuratively. And then we have the opposite end from our gospel passage, the opposite extreme of wanting to guard something so fiercely to not work that we end up, again, missing the whole point altogether. Um, we have talked, this is the last Sunday of what we've talked about through the summer of what it means to take Sabbath so that Christ is at the center of it, so that the Son of Man and the Son of God um, is able to show us just a little taste of what shalom, of what wholeness looks like when we spend a day in friendship with God, with each other, and with nature. And so in that space, we, the good United Methodists that we are, work the middle ground of saying no to an extreme that leaves no space for health emotionally, psychologically, physically, or spiritually, and an extreme that leaves so much space that there's the same psychological, emotional, physical, and spiritual concerns and dangers that come into play. And so we come to find the center, to find the space where the spirit's lively scheming is taking place to find where we can find more of ourselves. One of my favorite prayers is, God, untangle my garbled thoughts, unravel my gnarled nerves, and let me find rest in thee. We need this pattern in our lives, even in the commandment, even when God is telling us to observe the Sabbath, he already is saying, and all your family, that includes all the servants, that includes all the sojourners and all the immigrants, because I know you, and I know how you will try to find a loophole and not hold this and guard this time. Theologically, this is incredibly important for us as disciples because it reminds us that we are the created and not the creators. It reminds us that God's work in Christ's death and resurrection has won the victory over the powers of evil and the forces of wickedness. So we start our day in rest, in knowing that God has done this work. We don't hurry up and do it all ourselves because it all depends on us to get done. We start from the place of it being done and work from that center. And then we build the space in that calls us home when we get frayed and pulled in a million different directions and can't remember what is of priority and what isn't of what is a core value and what isn't because it's all got hold of us. And so we take a little trip away, even if that's just to the town over or even if that's just a walk in the morning. We break it up enough so that there is new space for the Holy Spirit to come and meet us and open our eyes and our hearts and our souls. This is something that we can talk about all day long, but it won't go anywhere until we practice. And I know of no better way of practicing friendship with God and friendship with nature and others than around the table. 
And so we're going to gather today, and we're going to gather around this table to remember all of the creating work that God has done, is doing, and will do. To remember all of the tangles that we have gotten ourselves in and all of the webs that have held us and bound us to the point where we don't know if we can ever find space to be free. And then we remember all that God did and accomplished and walking with us um, in the person of Christ and showing us the way out when we saw no way. And we know that God will continue to do that redeeming work until Christ comes again in all victory, until the work that has been begun in Christ's death and resurrection is brought to completion. And so just like for the prayer that we prayed in beginning the new school year, we pray for ourselves to have curiosity, to have wonder, to have the space where we are excited to find out what those Holy Spirit schemings are in our lives, where there is a center to work from, where we know the love and the fullness that flows through God that will give us the power that we need to share that blessing with others. Don't think too badly of the Pharisees. Um, this is, again, me preaching to myself because we all get stuck in really wanting to do the right thing and get so focused on the means to do the right thing that we make it the end. And that's a really, really easy thing to happen. And we all do it. I, I, I do it. And so we come to this table to be recentered in what is the core of our faith and what does matter so that all the other things that we have made the core that aren't, we can let fall away again. And so we gather to remember with the most basic of ordinary elements that are in our lives every day and multiple times a day so that we can center and that we can remember. That we can remember a night and remember the nights in our lives where we have faced betrayal and abandonment, where there has been torture, where there has been death, where there has been darkness, and how Jesus dealt with those nights. And taking bread, blessing it, breaking it, and giving it to his disciples to say, take, eat. Be filled, be sustained. This is my body, and it is broken for you. Remember me in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the piles of laundry and dishes. Remember me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, and after giving thanks and blessing it, he gave it to the disciples and said, take. Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, and it is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For all the times where we're the ones who have whipped up a spiral where there really didn't need to be one, where we have done harm because our margin was so thin, we just could not be kind any longer. There's a new beginning for us there, too. There's a cup of forgiveness and space to take a step back, to regain our margin, to let God's spirit and love flow through us once again, and again to come back to life and to routine and to those neighbors and coworkers we annoy us, but with new margin to be able to be brave and to be kind. And so in the midst of the week that is before us, in the midst of the new school year unfolding again in our lives, God, we ask and we pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us who are gathered here in body and in spirit, 
and on these gifts of bread and wine. God, we ask that you make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ so that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. God, make us one with you, one with one another, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Because it is in the love of your son, Jesus Christ. It is in the power of your Holy Spirit. And it is in the strength and the support of your holy community, the church, that this journey is possible now and always. Friends, this is the best news that we have. This is, this is fresh-baked homemade chocolate chip cookies good news. That we serve a Savior who is whole but who chose to become broken so that we who are broken might be made whole. A savior who was full but who chose to empty himself so that we who are empty may be filled. This is why keeping the Sabbath is one of our commandments because it is not meant for us to do this journey alone. It is meant for us to do it with the power of God in our very bodies. So come, this is Christ's table. All are welcome. It is not Epworth's or the United Methodist Church's table. So no matter what church you're coming from or what church you're running from, because God bless us, we are not always a part of the solution. But Christ is. And Christ's work is. And so anyone who needs to be filled, who needs a little extra power going into this week for that ability to love and to be present with others as God is present with us, this is our table. Um, we will be serving by intention, so we'll take a piece of the bread and dip it in the cup. Feel free to spend time up here at the rail in prayer if you like. We will also have an offering plate available. It is not to pay for communion. This is a free gift that is offered to you all. It is an act of faithfulness to extend the table knowing that there are those who need this love right now that are not here today. And so the offering will go to the United Church Assistance Network here in Cockeysville that will be that table for those who come in for the help so that we can be present with them as God is present with us. All right, servers, would you come forward? Um, we will have gluten-free crackers available. Come on in, you get a little hand sanitizer and all right. Yes, I do. Thank you. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, Jenny, you gotta do yours. And then Sony, this is for yours. Um, can you hold the so Sony will have you in the middle here. All right, so Sony's in the middle with gluten-free here, and then Virginia and I will be right here. And will you do -si do with me? All right, good. We got the dance started. Everybody else, come and join.
Would you join us in prayer? Risen Lord, you walk through this earth using the feet of very imperfect disciples. May we of every race and generation take time to look up and see you, draw nearer, listen and worship, and turn to follow you. Amen. All right. As we go forth to celebrate Sabbath in an extra holiday, honoring all of those who have made it possible in their advocacy before us, let's use it as good and holy Sabbath. So that's our commitment this week, to spend some time in friendship with God and other people and nature and use this extra time as one of those beautiful centering moments so that we may run and not be weary. Let's stand and join in our singing, our closing hymn.